الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد All praise due to Allah and his praise and blessing and peace be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his family, his companions, his followers until the day of judgment. My dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode of the Magnificent Seven. Today, we'll talk about the, fir- the, for- the fourth category. Today, we'll talk about the fourth category, which mentioned in the, had- in the hadith of the Prophet, وسلم, which narrated by Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah said, Seven are whom Allah would put them in his shade in the day of judgment. A just ruler, a youth who grow up with the worship of Allah, a person whose heart is attached to the masjids, and two persons who love and meet each other and depart from each other for the sake of Allah. A man who an extremely beautiful woman seduced him. He rejects her offer by saying, I fear Allah, and a person who gives in charity and conceal it to the extent that his left hand will not know what his, what his right hand is giving. A person who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in solitude and his eyes will up. This great hadith We've been discussing in our episodes and today we will talk about the fourth category. Two persons who love and meet each other and depart from each other for the sake of Allah. I personally love this topic so much. I think it's one of my favorite topic, talking about loving each other for the sake of Allah, about the importance of brotherhood and sisterhood. And I believe it's one of the most important topic to be touched in these recent days. When we see the Muslim world in great need of revivaling this spirit, the spirit of brotherhood, that we are all brothers and we are all sisters, we are all stand beside each other, support one another. I think today with all these challenges that the Muslims facing all over the world, if you talk about the highest level as countries and states, or you talk about communities and society, even individuals, we need each other. We need to revival the spirit of brotherhood. When you see greed and jealous and envy took over the heart of so many people, and the Muslim community scattered because of this kind of diseases, which is, will never grow in a healthy environment where brotherhood and sisterhood is the foundation for this community or this society. My brothers and sisters, sometimes when I read some of these stories to some of my friends or even myself when I read it, when people hear about it, they think this is impossible to happen. Some of the examples of so many people sacrifice so much much for their brothers for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That love for someone that he willing to give up his own life, his own comfort, his own wealth, just to please his brother. We all know the story of those three people in the Qadisiyah. When a Muslim man found three people who are in their last moment in this life and thirsty, saying, water, water. He brought the water to the first one. 
before he drank the water, he heard his brother screaming and saying, water, water. So he told the man, take the water to my brother. Maybe he deserved the water. He need the water more than I do. He took the water to the second person. And the second person about to drink, he heard another person saying, help me, help me. He said to the man, go to that person and give him the water. He took the water to the third person. By the time he reached the third person, the, per the third person already died. He came back to the second one, but he passed away. And he went to the first one, and he found him dead as well. Everybody give up the water for his brother. He willing to sacrifice in this moment, in this situation, just to save his brother. This spirit, this feeling, that you care about your brothers. As Ayyub al-Sukhtiyani said, Wallahi, when I hear about one of Ahl sunnah die in the West, and I'm living in the East, I feel like I lost one of my parts. I lost a hand or I lost a leg. That's how much he, 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 he feels that relationship between him and somebody he never saw in his life. And guess what? I think this is one of the most unique act of worship. That you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by loving someone and caring about someone that you never, you didn't know, you never even met. I know there is most of you out there maybe I never met in my life, but I love you all for the sake of Allah. And I care about all of you. That, that feeling that we need to revive in the heart of all Muslims, that this is not only words, it has to be translated to action in our daily life. One of the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed it on this ummah that he made brotherhood and sisterhood part of our religion. Part of our religion. That we love one another in the sake of Allah and we establish what we call it al-ukhuwa al-imaniya. It's part of the religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَاَعْتَصِيمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's robe, the robe which binds us. And don't be scattered. Don't be scattered. Or divided to groups fighting each other. Then he said, وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ Remember the great blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. That he made you brothers. He made you brothers. This Islam makes all of us brothers. No matter where it is, what is your race, what is your social level, what is your education background, we are all brothers and sisters in Islam. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, حَقَّتْ مَحَبَّتِي لِلْمُتَحَابِّينَ فِيَّ My love, indeed my love, will be giving to those who love each other for the sake of me. And my love will be given to those who visit each other for the sake of me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that. And my love indeed will be given to those who advise each other for the sake of Allah. And my love will be given to those who visit each other for the sake of Allah. And also will be given to those who give for the sake of Allah. All those people, Allah will give them his love. So, the point it to, is to be, loved, to be loved, not to love. The point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. This is the great things because everybody can claim that he loves Allah. But the point is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you in return. So this hadith shows you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his love guarantee for those who love each other for the sake of Allah or support each other or advise each other, which is all related to those who are brothers and sister for the sake of Allah. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, also, my love is been given, will be given, my love will be given to those who love each other for the sake of Allah. And I will put them in my shade in the day of judgment and I will protect them. I will protect them as been mentioned in hadith Ubadah radiallahu anhu. There is a great scholar among the tabi'een, his name Abu, Adri Abu Idris al-Khawlani. He said, I walked to the masjid of Damascus and I saw a man inside the masjid. He's a such good looking man. And this man was addressing 
a group of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But I noticed that when he talks, everybody listen. And if anybody starts talking, he will keep looking at him, seeking his approval. He has a shiny face, a very white teeth. And I asked my uncle, who's that person? He told me, this is Mu'adh ibn Jabal, the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Abu Idris said, I waited until Fajr time. And I came early to the masjid. I found Mu'adh praying there before Fajr in the first lane in the masjid. I came next to him and I sat down. Then after he finished, I told him, I just came to tell you that I love you for the sake of Allah. When Mu'adh heard that, he said, Allah, I ask you by Allah that you came only to tell me that? He said, yes. He asked him this three times. Then he hugged him and he said, I heard the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, my love will be given to those who love each other for the sake of Allah. Who love each other for the sake of Allah. Do you know, brothers and sisters, how old Abu Dris al Khulani was when he said that? He was nine years old. From this early age, he knew what it means to love somebody for the sake of Allah. What's the meaning of brotherhood and loving each other for the sake of Allah? Because it's something fundamental. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, Awthaqur al Iman, one of the highest level, the strongest meaning of Iman is to love for the sake of Allah and to hate for the sake of Allah. It is part of Iman, as been reported by uh, Abi Dawood through uh, Abu Umama radiallahu anhu wa arda, and other companions as well. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said, whenever two people love each other for the sake of Allah, love each other for the sake of Allah, the best among them, the one who loved the other persons the most. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa also said, if you want to taste the sweetness of Iman, if you want to taste the sweetness of Iman, you should love the person for the sake of Allah. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi said, the person will be resurrect, will be gathered in the day of judgment with the person he loves. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa once addressed the people. He said, oh people, listen to me. Oh people, listen to me. Understand clearly what I'm going to tell you. There is people on the Day of Judgment, they are not prophets, they are not shuhada, they are not among the Siddiqeen or the, the, the trust, uh, uh, the, the righteous, the high righteous ones. They will be in a position in the Day of Judgment, everybody will look up to them. Everybody will look up to them and seeking to know who they are. Then a man told the Prophet ﷺ, describe them to us, Ya Rasulullah. The Prophet ﷺ said, they are like average people. But they loved each other for the sake of Allah. Not because from the same tribe, not because they are from the same country, from the same race. They only loved each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would be sitting in a chair made of light, high chairs made of light. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give, will make their faces shining in the day of judgment, wearing clothes which is shining, and they will be protected in the day of judgment. They will be, not, they will have no fear in their heart in the Day of Judgment with so many people have fear in their heart in that day. They are the ones who love each other for the sake of Allah. This is what brotherhood will bring. And now we will break. Then we will come back inshallah to talk more in detail about the meaning of loving each other for the sake of Allah and how can we translate this in to actions. Amazing stories. The stories of the Quran, as well as the stories that were told to us by our beloved Prophet Muhammad والسلام, are not fairy tales. They are not stories that were made up to convince us of something. They are true stories that actually happened. They said in the masjid, the Prophet ﷺ is talking. They said, Subhanallah, Baqaratun Takalam. They said, Subhanallah, a cow that speaks, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this universe, my dear brothers and sisters, in such a beautiful way that everything is balanced, that every creature has a specific function, that they do not go 
outside of that frame, see subhanAllah how the Prophet is telling us about the story that happened before us. And this reminds us of the fact that Islam is a universal religion. In this program, we will know about peoples from different times and places whose stories were mentioned in the Islamic tradition. All of this with Sheikh Lutfi will relate their stories and extract the lessons and wisdom behind them. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome back to continue our discussion about the meaning of brotherhood and sisterhood in Islam and what it means to love someone for the sake of Allah. First of all, this love has to be sincere only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not looking for any worldly benefit out of this relationship. You did not establish this relationship because you are seeking something from this worldly matters to achieve or to gain. You love somebody only for the sake of Allah. Al-Rabi' ibn Khuthaym, one of the students of Imam al-Sahabi al-Jaleel, the great companions, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu arda once was seen by some of his students dessert, uh, decorating halwa, which is a kind of dessert, like a cake or a cookie, for a guest, an old man, who can't see, he can hear, that old man. So Rabi' was asked, why are you decorating this sweet or this dessert for him? If he can't see it, if he cannot hear anything about it, you can't describe it to him. Why are you doing this? Why do you care about it? It looks nice or, uh, or it doesn't. He's going to eat it. Then Rabi' said, if he can't see, if he can't hear, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees and hears. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeing me and hearing me and knowing that I'm doing this only to please him subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, this kind of spirit, this kind of sincerity, what will establish a very strong relationship between us if our relationship based on love, if our relationship based on uh, love for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. If we want to translate this love to actions, to be practical in our love towards each other, one of the first meaning the Muslim scholars mention is to give and support one another, to support one another. As you heard earlier in the hadith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, my love indeed will be given to those who support one another. لِلْمُتَبَاذِلِينَ فِيَّ لِلْمُتَبَاذِلِينَ فِيَّ To help your brother financially when he needs help. If you have a friend and you know that he needs your help, you give him. Uh, one, uh, once one of the wise men or a wise man saw two people walking with each other. One of them rich and another one poor. So that wise man said, are they friends? They said, yes. He said, how come they are friends and one of them so rich and one of them so poor? If they are friends, they will help one another. They will help one another. Al-Hassan al-Basri said, I used to know people who will split everything they have in two half. They will take half and they will give their brothers the other half, the other half. Even their clothes, if they have two garments, he will give his brother one and he will keep one. Giving your brother, as the ulama said, has three levels. To give him what is extra, what you don't need, what extra, and that what you don't, what you don't need or you're not going to use. You give him from that. And this is the lowest level. And guess what? So sorry to say, we are living in these days in a time where people, even if they have extra thing, they don't want to give it to anybody. They want to give it to anybody. They said, maybe in future I will use it. Maybe somebody in future will need it. But they're not willing to give it to any neighbors, to any needy, to people around them. They know. No. Anyway, it is interesting to know that this is the lowest level. Another level, which is a little bit higher than this, to give him equal to what you have. 
to give him what is equal to, your, to what you have. So if you have something, you give him equal to what you have. And then the highest level ever, to give him what you have in order for you to give it to him, even if you're going to lose it, even if you're not going to use it, but you give it to him and you, give, you favor him over yourself. يؤثرون على أنفسهم ولو كان بهم خصاصة Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describe those righteous one that they will give their brothers what they need to use. They will give them even if they need it in order for their brothers to use it or to eat it or to consume. They will love to give their brothers what they have. You all remember the Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when they migrated to Medina. What happened? The Ansar offered them everything. They share with them half of what they have. And the story of Abdul Rahman ibn Auf and Sa'd ibn Rabi' is very known and famous. When Sa'd ibn Rabi' told him, I have two houses, I have my wealth, I will share everything, even my family, I will, I'm willing to share it with you half, half. You take half and I will keep half and you choose which half you want. I always ask myself, if you or me or he or she, they're in Medina in that time. If we are the one who now represent Al Ansar, are we going to do that? Are you willing to give half of your wealth to your brother? That's why I always tell my brother and sisters, you have to realize how great men and women they were. I mean Al Ansar radiallahu anhum ardahum. That they're willing to give half of their wealth to the Muhajireen without hesitation. Actually, while well, they are happy to offer that to their brothers and sisters. Saeed ibn al-As, before he died, you know what his will was? Wasn't about how much money uh, I, 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 I need to give to my children, to my relatives, no. His advice or his will, before he died to his children, he said, my children, make sure that you take care of all my friends, the one I used to support and to help in this dunya. Take care of them, look after them, help them, support them. Don't let them need anybody because I used to support them all my life. Abu Sulaiman at Darani once said, I asked one of my friends, one of my brothers. I said to him, I need money. Then he told me how much you want. When he said that, I lost respect for him. You know, they used to say, the miser one who will give loan to his brother. They used to believe that if you have a brother, a real brother, you give him without even hesitating, without hesitating. Mutarrif, uh, given, I've given Uthman, Ibn Abi al-As, 400 piece of dirham. It's a currency which was well known or you, uh, commonly used in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, pieces of silver. He gave Uthman ibn Abi al-As 400 pieces of dirham. Then after a while, Uthman ibn As returned it back to him. He said, I didn't give it to you to give it back to me. I didn't give it to you to give it back to me. It's not from the good manners. To make money out of your friend. To make money out of your friend. Al-Imam Ahmad rahimahullah said, If this whole entire dunya became like uh, a bite, and I will give it to my brother, I will put it in his mouth, I don't have a problem with that. Which means I don't mind to give him the whole entire dunya. I don't have a problem with that. Because he's my brother. He said, how come a person will claim that he's your brother? and he will not make dua for you in the night. You know, Imam Ahmad rahimahullah used to have a number of people that he used to make dua for them every night. One of them was Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala, every night. Ibn al-Mubarak used to cook for his friend. He cooked food for them, he feed them 
while he's fasting, rahimahullah ta'ala. Some of the earlier Muslim scholars, the ulama or the scholars who wrote his, their biography said about them, some of them used to take care of his friend's children after his death for 40 years. Let's say he has a friend and he passed away, he left a family behind him. He said, they said he spent 40 years supporting that person's family after his death. The Prophet ﷺ said, the people Allah loves the most are the people who are more beneficial to other, who benefit people more. And the best deeds that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love the most when you make your brother happy, when you bring happiness to your brother or to your sister, when you help him to pass a hardship, when you help him in a time where he needs support and yakshifa an hukurba, when you pay his debt, or when you feed him when he's hungry, or you give him food when he needs food on the table, you bring the food on the table. My brother and sister, the Prophet ﷺ said, if I walk with my brother to help him, to help him to finish, uh, or to help him to finish something or some of his urns, let's say you walk with brother to the uh, police department, he want to have a driver license today. He want to apply for a driver license. You drive him over there. You help him to finish his uh, uh, test. Or you show him how to apply for the college. You take care of his need. He had a, his car broken. Then you walk with him to the mechanic. Something like that. To walk with your brother to help him to finish or to do his earns or what he needs. In Nabi Wasallam said, this is better than staying in the masjid for a whole entire month making i'tikaf, praying and fasting and reading Qur'an. In Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever will support his brother when he needs support, Allah will support him in the day of judgment. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in the end of the hadith, and bad manners will destroy your, do, your good deeds the same way the vinegar will change the taste of the honey. If you drop a vinegar in a jar of honey, the whole thing will be not, uh, uh, it will not taste good anymore. This is the same thing if you have bad manners, this bad manners will give you a bad reputation regardless what good deeds you do or you practice. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is another way to translate our love for each other, visiting each other. When was the last time you visit somebody for the sake of Allah? When the last time you told your wife, Let's go visit this family just for the sake of Allah. When the last time that you drove your car, somebody just, not just to have fun, just for a, a business. No, you went there just for the sake of Allah, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that. The Prophet sallallahu said, Do you want me to tell you who's among you will be in Jannah? They said, Sure, Ya Rasulullah. He said, The Prophet in Jannah. He said, A shaheed. The one who died in the war is Jannah. As Siddiq, the trustworthy in Jannah. And the newborn who uh, die in Jannah. Then in Nabi Sallallahu said, And the man who will travel to the other side of town just to visit his brother for the sake of Allah will be among the people in Jannah. That's why it was very common that people visit each other for the sake of Allah. It's one of the way to translate our love to each other. I'll stop here and I will see you in the next episode to talk also more in details about this great meaning, what it means to love one another for the sake of Allah. Until that time, I'll say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.